Hey guys, how's it going? Let's continue our paper. We are doing question 21 through 30. It says the best method of separating a mixture of liquids of different boil, boiling points is. So you're, you're, you're separating, it's a separation technique, and then you're separating a mixture of liquids, okay? And then these liquids, you're separating them by boiling points. So the answer here is fractional distillation. When you want to uh, separate, let's say crude oil, you want to separate it into certain fractions, you use fractional distillation. And simple distillation, it's uh, between water and, um, and maybe salt. So you have a simple solvent, sol uh, solvent and uh, solute mixture. So that's where you use simple distillation. Evaporation is not a separation technique, okay? You register a change in state here. So here it was a it's a change in state of the water in a simple distillation. It changes to water vapor, but then it's not really a change in state. In in state, so water water vapor it's um it's the stuff that you see. Let's say water is boiling. The stuff that you see is water vapor. The stuff that you don't see is steam. Okay, steam which means there'll be a change in um in phase so let's quickly move to the next part the next part is a solution that has ph 6 okay a solution has a ph of 6 the solution is a it's a weak acid so just a guideline weak acids means from 3 to 7 okay so let me write it in proper so this is ph it should be less than seven or then greater than than three okay you can say you can even say equal to your then strong acids strong acids the ph is less than three okay then weak bases It's pH greater than 7, less than 11, okay. Then strong bases, strong bases, rather. That's pH of, uh, it should be greater than 11, but then equal to your, it should be 14 here, yeah, okay. So you should be between those, and then that's that's how you find out. Uh, so so this, this is your key, and then seven, it's neutral. Okay, so you had six, six fours under this bracket here, of which uh, it's a weak acid. That's why we chose this. Okay, let's quickly move to the next part. Uh, question 23, question 23 says, neutralization reaction occurs when, it occurs when a neutralization reaction is acid plus Acid plus base, okay, alkaline. Then you have a salt plus water, always. This is the neutralization reaction. So here you're told that salt and water are formed. So you choose this one, simple. Let's move to question 24. It says um, the production of ammonia requires, so you're supposed to select from here. If you don't know too much, you can start selecting by elimination. So here it says sulfur oxide and oxygen. Obviously, it's not that. When you're producing ammonia, you want nitrogen and you want hydrogen. Okay, nitrogen gas, hydrogen gas, and you want to get uh, ammonia, so NH3 here. So this is actually a, re a reversible reaction here. Yeah, so this is it. This is the reaction. Okay, so we say that this one we don't want uh, because so far oxide and oxygen, they are not the reactants here. Vanadium oxide catalyst, vanadium pentoxide. So this is five. Vanadium five oxide means vanadium pentoxide catalyst. We don't use it there. We use it uh, in the production of sulfuric acid. So from sulfur trioxide to, uh, from sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide. That's when you use this. 
So obviously it's not for our process. In our process, we use iron as a catalyst. And then the temperature here, we are told 200 to, to 300. Um, typically the temperature that we use in the harbor process, the production of ammonia, it's uh, typically low, but then it's not as low as 200 to um, 300 degrees Celsius. It's uh, as low as 450. So it's low by industry standards. In terms of industrial processes, you'd expect that the temperature would be higher than that. So that's why. And then the pressure here, this part is correct. Okay, The pressure can be as low as 200. It can be as high as 400 atmospheres. And we should uh, go then there. We should tell you. So I don't know how to pronounce this, but then you should go then how most of those so they choose here they choose low temperature why do they choose that especially if you're doing chemistry this is really important and also the use of a catalyst why is it important why is it we use low temperature why is it we use high pressure so yeah let's move to question 24 it says what type of reaction occurs when carbon monoxide reacts with uh, uh, iron 3 oxide okay so this one it's a reduction reaction so yeah so let's uh let, let me write the, the equation so it should be carbon monoxide plus iron three oxide iron three oxide would be fe two or three like this then we'd get what we'd get iron plus carbon dioxide typically this is what we'd get. So the type of reaction that occurs is um, it's actually reduction on the on the part of, of iron, but then it's also um, oxidation on the part of carbon monoxide. Okay, so this one is called a redox reaction. Redox reaction is in the, there's reduction, there's also oxygen. Okay, if they had asked you. What's happening to the iron? This one is what it's it's iron ore. This one, I think it's called fer fer ferrite. This is iron ore. So this iron ore it's being reduced to iron. This is the procedure that you use. And then carbon monoxide is being oxidized, it gains oxygen. This one loses oxygen. This one is reduced, and then this one is oxidized. That's why you have to choose redox reaction. It's an oxidation and reduction. Okay. Let's quickly move to you. Question 26. It says the fuel, which fuel is a hydrocarbon? So hydrogen, hydrocarbon, yeah, this is the buzzword. Hydrocarbon means hydrogen plus oxygen only. Okay. So anything that contains hydrogen and oxygen only, nothing else. This is what we're looking for. Coal gas, it's, uh, it's actually carbon here. Then coal gas is general carbon. Then hydro hydrogen, it's gen it's, uh, it's, an, it's just an element. And then but uh, butane, butane is definitely a hydrocarbon, okay? Then ethanol here, this one is an alcohol. You have oxygen here. Here you have just carbon in general. Then you have hydrogen here. So that's why we chose, we chose C. Let's quickly move to question 27. What does it say? It says the diagram shows the uh, an organic uh, molecule. What's oh, the molecule is? What's the molecule? This one. What is it? So the key is just figuring out how many carbon atoms that you have in the center. So here we have how many carbon atoms that you have. Here you have two. So if it's two, you use this prefix. It's at. Okay. Then you have to figure out uh, from another, other clues. So this is, is this is a double bond. When we have double bond, we use this. It's, I chose that this one, it's an alkene, okay? If it were a single bond, we would call them alkane. Yeah, the functional difference is the, is the A. So this one, it's an alkene, and all alkenes, they incorporate this E here, okay? So it should be ethane. It should be ethane, okay? This one should be ethane. If it were just a single bond, it should should have been ethane. Let's quickly move to question 28. Question 28 says the possible unit of density is. 
So density is equal to mass over or volume. Okay, this one is called rho. That's how you write it. If you want, you can actually write it in words. So you're looking for what it means if it's m over v. What it means is that uh, you're looking for mass units per volume units. Okay, so you're just looking for mass units per volume units. Uh, which ones? Obviously this and this. So this one, it's a, it's a length unit, it's not a volume unit. This one, it's a volume unit. So grams per cubic centimeters. In fact, the units that are very common for density, it's grams for per cubic centimeters or kgs per cubic meter. And you should know how to convert this, by the way, especially if you're doing the core sciences. Let's quickly move to uh, question 29. Question 29 says the diagram it shows a simple machine. So this one here, uh, I don't know if you can see clearly, but then this, this, this one's is supposed to be someone's hands. Okay, it's supposed to be someone's hands. And uh, this one is a hammer. And what you're doing is you're removing a, a screw from, from within the, um, this one is a block of, um, of wood. So you're removing a screw. If you have done any carpentry, then you're familiar with uh, with what's happening here. You get uh, the screw through the tiny opening and then you have to push outwards. So you have to push this direction here. And then it creates a turning effect on the, on this part here. And that's the turning effect now. It uh, removes the, the nail. So this machine is called a, a lever. Let's quickly move to the next part. Next part says, next part says, an effort uh, of uh, 150 newton, uh, an effort of 150 newton raises a load of 600 newtons through a distance of two meters. The effort moves moves a distance of 10 meters. What's the efficiency efficiency of the system? So work done by effort. Is equal to so by effort you multiply the effort in this case it's 150 so it's got 150 newtons multiply by what um it's raised through so here effort it means whatever you're doing you're actually doing of which what you did is you actually pushed the uh the person here concerned they actually pushed the um the the load through 10 meters okay so here you can you can actually leave it like this it's okay then work done by or work done on load this is also called the energy output this is also called the energy output okay let's go to you the amount of energy so um, amount the, the load is what is uh 600 and the distance that you have to travel it's only two meters okay so this is mgh if you're doing science if you're doing uh physics i mean this is this would be mgh and then this is the actual work that that you have to do along the along the incline okay so So efficiency is equal to power output over power input or energy output over energy energy output over energy input multiplied by 100 percent okay as a percentage so here you get power if any energy output it's what it's what you actually did what you actually did was that you uh, so by two meters yeah if you want you can leave out the units okay it's still okay it's still fine just remember to put them at the end so multiply by a hundred percent like this so here this one into this one you actually get uh, four and um, four by two you get okay let me just cancel this one and this one then you get eight eight by ten then you get eighty percent so is this so the work done by effort 
that's your energy input okay then the work done the actual work done by 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 the lord it's actually what energy what energy output and then when you take that ratio and then you multiply by 100 percent you get uh 80 percent for our case okay so we'll come back again with another video but right now let's stop here uh then we'll do another video to continue from question 31 through question 40. so thanks for watching make sure you like share and subscribe Yuba out